I want you to look at yourself in the mirror right now and then blame yourself for the next 10 hours of your day to saying that this show was trash, that the show wasn't going anywhere, and this show was bad. I think we got delivered for one of the best episodes so far. A very big episode in the whole show and having so many things happening at the same time in this episode and literally connecting all the dots that the show was pointing out and then there are no conclusions so clear and now they are leading to something huge. Not anything that's so clear, but now it is leading to something. And we are going to talk about what's going on and what's going to happen throughout the show and what's going to end it. And so please, guys, please, guys, leave a like. Please subscribe. It helps a lot the channel. I'm loving to do these reviews of Mandalorian. And let's go with this review. First of all, I said no one, no one needs to be a psychic to know that it is... They quickly developed the show, so they already sent the Mandalorians back to Navarro. But something that not a lot of people were saying, but I was saying, like, this is going to be something that's going to be used a lot in this episode, which is the relationship between the Mandalorians that follow this path in the religion and the cult pretty seriously of not taking off their helmet, for example. And the people who don't like these ones, like the bo who was joining forces and now they're more bounty hunters. And this was the kind of the thing that I said as in the tale, but it makes the story way richer and makes us want to watch all over again and makes and making that you know really deep and really thoughtful and a very complex show i think and open the path of star wars to develop more serious stuff and i'm enjoying this and i hope disney sees that and goes also to marvel and repeats the same process because this is what people enjoy for all ages and having them having those looks throughout the show and not only that while x wolves and past Vizsla, that you could see like it was just a game that they were playing like a chess game or something and only with that they were able to unleash hell between them so and already judging themselves and say one is worse than another and having that was great and also bo leaving out the conclusion that what made them weak was to face against the empire to the other forces was because they were already divided because of other creeds some people were living in mandalore some other people like jarring they were living in the outskirts of those other moons around mandalore and not having them united as one made them fall to the Empire. And having those divisions made them weaker. And the conclusion, they're making them stronger as they were together. And we saw that throughout this episode. How they were stronger together. Another thing that I was saw in the last episode was like that I'm not seeing a lot from... I'm not seeing a lot of Grogu. I want to see him more. I love him. It's like it was the most genius move that Disney has ever done in making this character. Because it's so loved. And having this in the episode... It was interesting because they were Navarro, Grief, Kaga, showed something to Mando, which was find the IG-11 who was fixed. But at this time, it was not like a conscious robot anymore. He took their memory chip and now he's just a shell. Like, uh, you know, for example, if you haven't seen Power Rangers, you have the Megazord, you know. So this is going to this is gonna be Grogu's Megazord. So he was just piloting him all over the place and this comic relief was just... So amazing because having him piloting, well, it's awesome also for us to understand a little bit of his thoughts, for example, because they have like a chat button inside this robot so he could say yes or no. And he was thoughtful and understanding everything that was happening. And just for people to understand that he is 50 years old. And even though he is like a structure of a baby and things like that, his communication skills are a little bit lower than the majority of people. He's still pretty smart. He still understand things. He was piloting all of that and trying to get stuff for, for, <laughs> for example, he was trying to eat stuff and uh, Mando tried to control him. And uh, was almost so powerful in terms of like what he could reach. And for me, it was one of the most amazing things in this episode, uh, comically speaking. Of course, we cannot forget about Juan Carlos Esposito, which is finally back again because this guy, he cannot have a bad show in his resume because this guy made Breaking Bad one of the greatest shows of all time. Mandalorian now and he also made The Boys which is one of my favorite uh, TV shows ever and he's like hit him doesn't miss and we've seen him also with all the warlords in this episode that were they were there because of the end of the Empire they're trying to bring them back and also explaining what was his thing with the scientist that was captured by the Republic in that episode that people were saying was kind of boring it was and it kind of indicated that he did uh, this thing of erasing his memory because as he was captured by the Republic they will might as well torture him to get all the other information. But you know, he, we, them erasing his memory was the best thing that they could have done. But I think they got remnants of his research so they can put his plan together. Then he reviews later 
to all of the Mandalorians. And we see already tanks that look like clones as he goes to the meeting. And I was already thinking, like, right off the bat, that they probably use this technology that they got to clone Snoke and clone the Emperor that happened later. You know, people tend to forget that that happened, but it kind of might be a reference, like, in the end of the season, like, showing the fans of, like, reviving the Emperor or doing something. I think they try to fix what happened in episode eight, 9. Um, and another thing that I didn't clear to me, which was like Warlord is kind of hard to understand if they are right or wrong because they're saying that there are planets around the galaxy that they're not liking the New Republic anymore. They're trying to return to the Empire. Something that similarly happened in episode one and two of Star Wars where uh, planets were trying to avoid the Republic and go to the separatists or something. Already in the planet, they got to the cave that led to the furnace that they were hoping to forge, which was their people used to forge. Things was like the main foundation, literally, of their culture of the planet, which was the forge that they literally created the armors and or most of the armors they were having in their planet, and was the heart of their planet. And of course, it was called it was stopped because of the war. And as they go with throughout the seasons that would, and as they were going throughout this cave, and people who were looking like Mandalorians came out, but there were actually some Imperial guards who were like having structured those armors just like Mandalorians, if their weapons was were kind of similar and of course they had some gadgets off but of course they don't have any match to fight any of those guys as they were going further and further they fight of course a secret empire base because it would make sense of them noticing their arrival on the planet and them being so fast on finding for example Mando after he left Mandalore finding him in Bo-Katan's planet and as they are being captured just a guy appears wearing I don't know what you can say like a Power Ranger suit or maybe an Iron Man suit all mixed together it looks pretty freaking nice and I want an extra feel from that which was Gideon arriving with his new badass suit looking like the dark troopers that they fought or actually uh, the dark robots that they fought against in the last episode of the second season and they and then of course look annihilated them all and basically the plan that the emperor had was basically looking to what biggest civilizational groups had any making the perfect measure of all of that and making a powerful army to destroy everything basically for example they got from mandalore the baskar which was the mineral that they have and mando has for example his old armor which is the most resistant mineral ever like for example they could fight they fought ex for example where they had the basket it was like a blade of, and they fought with the dark saber against gideon for example so it is that resistant and he was using of course the technology of cloning was gonna make it uh, it wasn't clear of if they're gonna make clones of Gideon or they're gonna, gonna do just like a regular clone, just like they did in the Clone Wars, which are very capable and smart clones that are gonna, you know, rule everything. And they're gonna make a massive army that do conquer the galaxy. I think the plot could be a little bit better in that, but the idea was pretty much consolidated. And I went to, and they brought that everything. But of course, they captured everyone and just try and capture Mando. But one of the most badass moments of the show happened, which was Paz Villa almost single-handedly slaughtering all of those troopers that were arriving by jetpacks. I don't know how many he killed, probably like 30, 40 of them. It was like so fast they were just arriving and then just killing with this with his weapon. And his armor was pretty resistant. Like it doesn't look like Basker, but it looked like it was a very powerful role. he's like a tank and the shots was just reflecting on everything and then he got his weapon he used it so much he got overheated and then he just slaughtered them all with his weapon like he got the weapon throw it at them he was punching those guys they were flying around like crazy he was looking like you no know, prime goku over there because it was just massively killing them all and at the moment i thought like he was gonna die because he was shooting and getting a false hope that he killing all of them, like he was tired and everything. And then I saw somebody alive uh, arriving, and I think everyone thought that it was probably Gideon arriving and was gonna kill him with like a Basker sword or something. But it was not. There was something that was for me way much better, which was I think something that people forgot, which was those Imperial guards that were those red suited guys, which. For me, one of the most beautiful and aesthetic cars that they have in Star Wars because of their armor was just visual, visually beautiful and they are so pretty. Very skillful with their abilities. The last time we saw it was, I think, the last was Star Wars 8 where they were fighting against Ben and Rey. And I was seeing that fighting against it was great and of course it did not stand a chance even though he was very powerful because they had, you know, visually awesome uh, physical weapons and 
he just had like a butter knife and a small ass shield and the ki when they killed him it was a little bit shocking for me because they pierced him throughout his whole armor like both of them pierced him and just cold bloodedly murdered him uh, it was something shocking it was amazing also and of course they concluded the episode over there because they want us the cliffhanger for the last one and let's see what comes out of the conclusion of the show because next week's gonna be the last one and i'm really 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 pumped to see it because it's going to be one of my favorite that series of this year so far and we need to establish probably what is gonna conclude everything as i said they're probably trying to fix up what happened in episode 9 maybe getting a factual reason why are they cloning the emperor or something and they probably showed this at the end and probably a battle against gideon and i hope you get more of a glimpse of all was Grogu's past. Let's see where the Jedi were leading to. And maybe the next season starts to develop more. Maybe about Grogu's story. And they are coming already with the conclusion to this season. Uh, for me it was one of the best ones. And the most definitely the most controversial one in some aspects. Because people were definitely waiting for something. And they didn't get their expectations matched. But it was what it is. Uh, I think it wasn't a bad show at all. Like the second season I think was the best one. If you think about it, because of the conclusion, the conclusion was perfect with Luke. Even if you see IMDb, the episode has a, like a 9.8 rating. Like this is insane. And it's giving me hope for what's coming next to Star Wars. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will definitely see you guys on the next video. So goodbye and peace.